Hello, you are listening to the Natural Healing Show for UK Health Radio. I'm your host, Katherine Kerrigan, medical intuitive healer, Amazon number one bestselling author. You can find out more about me and my work at KatherineKerrigan.com and UnlimitedEnergyNow.com. While you're there, definitely sign up for my newsletter so you can learn even more about how you can heal yourself naturally. Now, the natural healing show for UK Health Radio, we've got 46,000 global listeners all over the world. Wherever you can listen to podcasts, you're going to find UK Health Radio. Now, our guest today is Atul Mira. Atul Mira is the author of the wonderful new book, The Need for Disease. If you can create, if you create your disease, you can heal it too. You can find out more at, about Atul Mira and his wonderful work at his website, atulmira.com. Welcome, Atul Mira. Thank you, Catherine, for this wonderful invitation. I think it's the second time we are meeting. You know, it was an amazing time I had with you. And once again, so grateful for your invitation. Yes, and if you haven't already listened to my previous interview with Atul Mira, I strongly recommend that you go back and listen because he talked about how our psychological problems actually originate in the womb. And that was your first book, correct? Yeah, The Unseen Wisdom of the Unborn, and it's also international Amazon bestseller. Cool. All right, so today we're talking about the need for disease. <coughs> So Atul Mira, what is the origin of human relationships? You know, like I would say, where is the origin of our life? That is in mother's womb. So once we are conceived, I mean, that process, not even conceived, you know, even the sperm is carrying that information. And if it is an accepted child, because sperm has that consciousness, then I attract more acceptance in my life. And same way, if I get that acceptance from ovum, which is mother, then I'm an accepted child, then I have a purpose. I'm, you know, I'm accepted and that is one of the best emotions. So I'm going to accept lots of problems, lots of things in my life as they are. Means I'm not going to say, uh, I mean, I will have special relationships with to be with to be with others, to love others, to accept others. To, 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 you know, to work in a harmony with others because I got that harmony, that love from my parents, which is the base for, the, for my introduction to the world through my parents and their sentiments, their relationship with me, um, you know, reflects my relationships later in my life with other people because first they are parents, then there are substitute of parents which are others. So if I have a good relationship with my parents, which starts in mother's womb, if I got that acceptance, then I will create good kind of relationships throughout my life. Now, your new book, your second book, Atul Mira, is called The, Knees, the Need for Disease. Yeah. What? And I'm a medical intuitive healer. People come to me because they have symptoms. You know, some uh -huh. hurt, something feels uncomfortable. They want to know why do I have this symptom and how do I get rid of it? I just want to feel good. In your view, Atul Mira, what is this? What is a symptom? So, symptom is who creates a symptom. You know, people say you don't buy your symptoms from supermarket. You don't go to supermarket and say, "Oh, sir, we are selling our anxiety." Would you like to buy it? You don't do that. You create your symptom. You don't buy your disease from someone. You don't get as a as a as a gift. So if you are creating, there has to be a reason. Because symptom is something logical. This is the wisdom of the body to find and create a perfect symptom. Symptom is when something is not going correctly inside you. Let us say if you are, let us say you move your hand a lot and now you're feeling pain. And you say, oh, I don't know where this pain is coming from, right? But of course, because you moved your uh, hand a lot, maybe you were doing some work, so there is pain. So body is telling, listen, you have pain. This is symptom because you moved your your uh, your body, you used your hand more than it was required, like you did weightlifting or something like that. So likewise, 
when our system in our mind or our body goes out of the normal limits, it creates pain, it creates symptom. It is trying to say that something is not good. Something is not working very deep down inside you and you are creating it. Because basically, uh, I always tell my clients, you know, it's ridiculous to say that, but if we look from unconscious pers perspective, your anxiety is telling you what you're not doing, yeah. right? So once you start understanding, because your body is sending you a message through, you know, physical pain, mental pain, or something else, some intuition, some, some, some perception, some sensations. And if you are well aware, if you are in tune with yourself, if you are in connection with yourself and you can accept it, recognize it and integrate it back, then you become one and you have less conflicts and you have less, you know, problems, you have less symptoms and you have more acceptance, more happy life, more positive life. And you attract every kind of good vibes in your life, but you're looking for, for a long time. Okay, I just love that explanation, Atul Mira. And I'm going to share with our audience a little bit about my perspective as a medical intuitive healer. Now, one of my 10 books is called The Difference Between Pain and Suffering. And in essence, that's a book about how to get out of pain naturally without drugs. Because before the pandemic, the number one cause of death for Americans under the age of 50, before the coronavirus pandemic was actually drug overdose. So, so many people are turning to drugs to deal with pain. So I have to tell the story because it's relating to what you're talking about. So as a medical intuitive healer, I live my life prayerfully and I listen to my, my intuitive guidance. And one day I was driving down the road and I got the guidance. You need to write a little article about the difference between pain and suffering. So when mm -hmm. I got to my computer, I wrote this article, it took me about 30 minutes. And then when I looked at my website statistics, someone read that article literally every day of my life. And I wow. realized people are really wanting to understand, again, what is this symptom? What is pain? What is suffering? And in a nutshell, pain is our physical experience. Suffering is the emotional experience. And um, I'm going to give an example of um, someone, a human being, you can have two human beings and they have no human being, of course, is going to walk exactly the same path. All right. But they may have similar paths. So, for example, um, the great singer Tina Turner just passed away and she suffered from domestic abuse. She was lived with Ike Turner who broke her bones and you know tremendous abuse on every possible level and yet she became a very happy person she even wrote a book about happiness and yet mm -hmm. other people who suffered from domestic violence they may never recover from it they may suffer on every level as a result of that mm -hmm. So we can all experience, as they say, pain is inevitable, suffering is optional. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yes, but, that's right, you know. Yes, but I agree with you that when we find peace and harmony within ourselves and, and we become at peace with who we are, who we really are, our true selves and the world around us, we tend to experience a much, much less pain and suffering. That's right. I completely agree with you. Yes, we're, we're in alignment on all that. And, and I agree with you that when we have these symptoms, those are messages. And I always say, you know, you only have to get hit over the head when you're not paying attention. And <coughs> when you can start paying attention to these little messages of the body, they can begin to tell a story of what's happening. I'll never forget years ago, listening to a lecture by Candace Pert, who is a scientist, and she was the co-discoverer of endorphins. And she said, if you want to understand what's going on with your unconscious mind, just look at your body. <laughs> That's you right. Want... Yes. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, also when a patient comes, he or she has two parts part that create the symptom and part that wants to remove the symptom. So I do not do therapy against the symptom because any symptom which is removed forcefully 
whether with medication <clears throat> or suggestion therapy, creates an illusion that apparently symptom has disappeared, but it goes into deeper part of psyche level and finds out a new pathway to show up, which is worse than the previous symptom, different than the previous symptom, and different than the original problem. Now, this condition is known as relocation of symptoms or symptom shift, which was discovered by Dr. Reckweg. Another therapy against symptom, another symptom shift, till it goes from bad to worse. Now, these new symptoms can take hours, months, or years to show up again. Now, there has been further study by Dr. Meinhold, who discovered in Germany, symptoms can switch from physical level to mental level and vice versa. For example, you are angry and you hold your anger. Suddenly, you feel that your heart palpitation goes up and you might feel perspiration in your palms, symptoms manifesting there. Because in the story of your life, since you were a sperm till present day, is a story of your life, history of your life. If some part at some age, some period was not integrated healthily, then your body expresses it through a disease or a disorder. This is healthy expression from body point of view, but it is pathology if we rationalize it. So when a client comes, I do not do therapy against the symptom, but I'm a lawyer or a counselor of the part which creates the symptom. Not why, but what for? Because if you have 30% of bad energy, in order to maintain it below, you need other 30%. So 60% is in conflict and you're just living with the rest of the 40% of your energy. Yes. And Atul Mira, you and I are in 100% agreement. And I'm going to butcher this quote, I'm sure, but there's a famous quote by Sigmund Freud. And he said, Sigmund Freud said, buried emotions never die. They just show up in uglier, you know, uh, 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 uglier ways, right? That's right. That's and right. When I'm doing my healing work, because I am not only a medical intuitive, but also a healer, I always find the emotion. And emotions can literally shut down any level of your being. And if you don't yeah. clear the emotion at the same time, then you fix your neck pain and you hurt your wrist and you fix your neck and your wrists and then you sprain your ankle and it just goes on and on. And so we have to correctly identify the emotion or emotions behind every dis-ease or it's just like you said, it, I love that term, the relocation of symptoms. It's just going to move around. And That's right. A good visual of this, if um, anyone had ever seen, there's an old movie by Mel Brooks called Young Frankenstein. And in the movie, there was a character that had a hump. And one time you'd look at him and the hump would be on the right shoulder. And another time it would be on the left shoulder. And it's like, mm -hmm. wait a minute. <laughs> so, so when you, as a human, so going back to our audience, because we've all experienced this. So when you your symptoms are relocating, then that sort of proof positive that you haven't actually gotten to the emotional root of what's been bothering you. That's right. Absolutely. And that's why everything starts in mother's womb. All the relationship starts there. Everything starts there. That's, that's, the, that's the seed, how the seed is conceived it becomes the seed is of good quality or it is of bad quality. I mean, there's no, I, that will be pathological to say good quality or bad quality. But I mean to say that how that seed got experience from parents, the acceptance or rejection. And based off that, you know, he will grow and manifest his essence in this world. Yes. And again, I'm, if you haven't read Atul Mira's first book, so give everyone the name of your first book again. The Unseen Wisdom of the Unborn. The Unseen Wisdom of the Unborn. So if you haven't read his first book or actually listened to our first interview, it's really worth listening to be, uh, and reading because again, you're the problems that you are having right now, no matter what age you are, I'm 64, whatever, if I haven't resolved those early childhood issues, it's going to manifest on every level in my being now. And um, I highly recommend reading that. And really, to me, as a medical intuitive healer, it's about embracing your life, okay? It's about... it. it, it 
accepting the gift of your life. Mm -hmm. And when you realize that it's a gift and a privilege to be fully alive. I, I wrote about this in my book, Reading the Soul. Because mm -hmm. um, so many people have issues with their birth parents. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> yeah? Yes. <laughs> right? That's right. Yeah. And and um, another piece of wisdom, Einstein said, Einstein find, somewhat recognizes oh, kind of a smart guy. He said, the most important question is whether or not you consider the universe to be a friendly place. So when yeah. you realize that it's all good, it's all here for your benefit, and that you're given this gift of your body here in this lifetime, you can have a whole different perspective. Yeah, you know, you made me remember, I know if Carl Jung was alive, we would be very good friends. Mm -hmm. And I love one of his quotes where he says, until unless you make your unconscious conscious, that will guide your direct your life and you will call it fate. Yes, it brings me to my next question. How can making our unconscious conscious help us overcome disease? You know, it's a very interesting question because you know that 99, more than 99% of our life we live unconsciously. We are always in the past or in the future, we are never now and here. So when we perceive this present moment with five senses, it's already part of past. So our thoughts take us to our past, imagination to future. If I remove your imagination, if I remove your past, your, your thoughts, you have no past, no future, but you're obliged to live now and here, which is the objective of life. All the religion, all the courses, all the therapies are insisting on to live now and here which is at the same time, most difficult task, right? That is why we live uh, in, in this life. So unconscious part is what is doing everything. All your thoughts, what is happening. It looks like that you have a free will, but there's no such free will. If we go, whatever the first impressions you had in your life, they are controlling your present life. Now, making unconscious conscious helps you to understand more about yourself you understand what for, you get all the answers. You might be having all the answers there, but maybe rational mind can be blind or important, but unconscious mind sees it correctly. For example, there is a story. So there is this lady who goes to church for confession. It's pathological, but this is what it is. And he say, and she says, father, father, my husband loves me no more. Mm. Said. Why, my daughter, what's happening? He said, I feel that he doesn't love me anymore. He said, so he says, okay, you know, you should pray to God. And, you know, God is going to fill his heart with love. Father, you don't understand. Since last six months, I'm going every day to church. I'm, you know, filling up. I'm, you know, lighting the candle. I'm praying. I'm giving food to poor people, bringing garlands and other things. I'm doing everything possible, which I know in my all life, which I have done which I have learned, but he is not listening to me. So now the priest gets a little bit, uh, little bit uh, nervous. He says, how do you know he doesn't love you? He says, because he has stopped hitting me. <laughs> so now this is pathology, we know, but now let us go to the unconscious mind. So research shows in houses where parents do not love their kids, hug their kids, kids create the situation where mom or dad gets angry and they hit them. And through that hitting, they are fulfilling that basic need of a touch. Pathological, but nevertheless, the need for unconscious mind. You know, so many skin cancers has been cured just by caressing people. Touch is very important. Mm. And that touch, because of the mother's touch in the first six months, just to get that mother's touch, if the touch is not there, the child can create addictions, which is the absence of mother. So we need to start understanding unconscious mind. Now, the research shows that every fatal accident or heart attack might be, can be, or possibilities are there, can be an unconscious form of committing suicide. Why the heck that person has to be there not few seconds before and not few seconds after? 
So if we tap into unconscious mind, let me tell you another thing. You know, I have three very famous icon who I love. Let us talk about Mother Teresa. So, you know, Mother Teresa is an amazing person. You know, we need more people like her. But now let us go a little bit unconscious perspective. So Mother Teresa, in the last moment, you can find it on internet, she suffered clinical depression. Mm -hmm. She said, I am a dark angel. I will never get a place in heaven. Mm -hmm. So she sacrificed her sexuality to help the humanity, which is amazing. But was she trying to fill that emptiness? Maybe that gap which she had because one of her parents died when she was seven, eight years old. We don't know until we tap into unconscious mind. So they say do service, do service, but service can unconsciously may be a way of filling that emptiness. Now the second icon is Bruce Lee. They say do exercises. Exercise is going to make you feel good. Bruce Lee did all the time exercises. They say he had no fat in his body, died in 32 years of his age, just because of one, you know, a painkiller, headache painkiller, we don't know until we tap into his unconscious mind because there are lots of mysteries involved. Now let's talk about people say, oh, you should have name, fame, money. Look at Robin Williams icon. I love that icon. This guy's movies were phenomenal. He committed suicide in 65 years of his age. So we don't know until we tap into his unconscious mind. Because I was talking, I had recently, you know, on Monday, I had a, I was an international seminar as a keynote speaker, you know, I was talking to doctors and I was telling them, we do not have resources, but if we can tap into the unconscious brain of all the COVID patients, right? Because some people with COVID died, other came to life. If we can access all those people's brain, after some time, we have maybe a kind of pattern. We know that if this person is going to be contagious with COVID, if he's going to die or not, what is his, how much survival percentage these people have, but we do not have that access. So, you know, unconscious mind is amazing when you start looking at the things because unconscious mind teaches you to become one. And because that's why it's good for one side, bad for other side. But unconscious mind doesn't differentiate. That's why you watch a movie or, or, you, or you watch, uh, I mean, horror movie, you get scared because your unconscious mind cannot differentiate between reality or a fantasy. So that's why God has given us, nature has given us, universe has given us, conscious mind has given us, analytical mind and has given us emotional mind. And we need to bring that balance because the part which connects to hemisphere is known as corpus callosum which is always trying to make, you know, balance between these two sides. So we know everything consciously, but we don't know anything about us unconsciously. So until and unless you make unconscious conscious, then you will start getting those answers. And then the acceptance of self, acceptance of self comes. Then the complete acceptance comes. And when you have complete acceptance, absolutely you have no fear. And with that, let's take a break and listen to uh, a message from one of our commercial sponsors here at UK Health Radio. I'm your host, Catherine Kerrigan, medical intuitive healer, and we're here with Atul Mera, author of The Need for Disease. Hang in there and we'll be right back. So Atul Mehra, um, I'm a medical intuitive healer. And one of the main reasons people come to me for medical intuitive readings is to understand what are the emotional causes of my disease? And also what are the mental causes? Like what am I believing that's creating this disease? And what am I feeling that's creating this disease? And as a medical intuitive healer, it's very easy for me to read that. That's part of what I do every day. Beautiful. As the author of The Need for Disease, how do you go about reading the unconscious mind? So, uh, you know, there's a very specialized technique uh, 
developed by Dr. Vernon Meinhold in Germany. So it allows to access unconscious parts consciously. So the idea here is that we take the person into a conscious relaxation state, let us say 10 cycles per, uh, per second CPS, that is uh, alpha state. And then the subconscious mind brings up the problem, right? And then uh, through a, 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 a way of symbolism, we it connects to the memories of the past going up to even mother's womb, right? Even up to sperm consciousness, right? Accessing them consciously. And then the person relates all those problems and find out what is the pattern, hidden pattern working underneath, which is contributing to present day symptoms. So then, you know, other symbolism, other techniques, other tools of the therapy are used. And so basically 90% work is of persons. My uh, role is just 10% because all the questions are inside you and also all the answers. So basically you, you know, you already have all the answers, you know, all the answers, but you don't know them consciously. And we then, you know, take those answers to unconsciously. And so it's integrative therapy of in-depth psychology. In-depth psychology deals with unconscious behaviors and attitudes. One of the best things of this therapy is the integration, because let us say you go to a psychologist, you speak, speak, psychologist, he writes, right. Okay, next week, speak, speak, write, right. After a few sessions, you got awareness. Now what? Live with it. Awareness without integration is incomplete. And integration has to be done without guilt, which is the most difficult emotion to handle with. So, you know, this is, the, this is how we, we start understanding ourselves we bring those problems up and that's why we can go to the basic, basic essential fear which are hidden in the unconscious, I mean, accessing them very, very slowly, one step by one step. That's why it takes a long time to, to do the whole work. So, and then, you know, we can bring them up and then we can integrate them back because a fast access can 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 create, you know, inundation of, uh, of uh inundation of subconscious person can feel suicidal and feel, you know, anxious, or he will not come back to the therapy. So that's why, because these fears are hidden under lock and key of the unconscious mind. And, and research shows it's easy and safe to create a disease, a cancer or terminal disease or some other disease, then to confront, bring up these shut off memories. So that's why it has to be done very slowly, very slowly. So Dr. Meinhold created, you know, this process and it has, and one of my client cured her tumor uh, with, uh, with, you know, this therapeutic process and base was in mother's womb. And there are other lots of miracles which are happening, you know, cancers, terminal cancers going out of the, out in the toilet in the first session, everybody's surprised what is happening. So what I'm trying to say that you have all the possibilities to create a disease and you have all the possibility to reverse it because the soul of disease and soul of health is same. Yes. And when if someone's listening to this and you're wanting to do the self-care option, I'm a big fan of journaling and spend mm -hmm. time. Yes. And you, we, again, we agree, you know, spend time journaling about, you know, what does my illness mean to me? Why do I think I created this disease? And see, just see what your unconscious shares with you. Now, Atul, Mira, you said something very interesting earlier in this interview. You said addiction is the absence of mother. So when a person's suffering from an, any kind of addiction, what is their unconscious mind saying? So, of course, you know, there's a third book which is coming, Addiction is Survival, Not Guilt. Oh, great. Yes. Okay. So, but I will not go into lots of details, but let us understand that we don't have, like in my first book, we don't have five senses, but we have 18 senses. So, so let us talk about two senses, which I love them, and I will explain addiction a little bit with that. So, when first time the mother's blood touches the baby's body, 
he develops the sense of warmth, right? Which is in the sense of love. And you know, blood is also have a great symbolism in Catholic religion, blood of Jesus Christ, right? That's why they drink wine to a lot of symbolism connected with that. Now let us, so now let us say, baby is in womb and mother walks. And, and baby is moving right, left, right, left, which, you know, they put them into, that's why when the baby takes birth, they put them into, how do you call it? I've forgotten the name. A hammock, a, a bassinet. Yeah, the way they move, you know, like. Yes. So that's the same thing. So the, at that time, child, child uh, developed the sense of balance. What is alcohol? Unbalance. Hmm. Okay. Now, with that, let's take another break and listen to a, a message from one of our commercial sponsors. I'm your host, Catherine Kerrigan, medical intuitive healer, Amazon number one bestselling author. We're listening to Atul Mira and his about his wonderful new book, The Need for Disease. So Atul Mira, if you look at the big picture, and this is a big philosophical question, you know, if you think about how human beings were created, we could go through life without any disease. I guess that's possible. I don't know anybody who's never had disease. Why do you think that human beings need for disease? Your book is called The Need for Disease. What is the need for disease? So for that, you know, we have to understand the concept. Uh, I mean, I don't know, I should go into a scientific concept or I should can go into energetic or spiritual concept also. So for that, let us, since you are intuitive healer, and I think if we don't speak of all those things, then it will not worth it. So now, for example, let us say, I have many clients who consciously access the memories when they are in a spirit form, in a soul form, and they are seeing their parents making love. Mm. But they're not interested in that. They're just waiting for sperm to fertilize the egg and they can take you know birth into that body, right? Now, let us say sperm is moving. So sperm has very first at the beginning. That conscious sperms already knows before starting his journey, when you get the conscience that he's the only one who will arrive there. It's not that who one reaches first, it's there in my book, right? So let us say father doesn't want to have a baby. And now the sperm feels that fear that I am not father. If I get, if I, if the sperm, I mean, he's carrying the information, fear of the father, which in other words is an unwanted child, right? And if the same information is coming from the mother's ovum, then he's an unwanted child or he can be unwanted child both sides or he can be unwanted child from one side. It means there is a lack of unconditional love. So where there is a lack of unconditional love from father's side or mother's side, it is not there, there can be anything. Yes, and I, I believe reading research, um, by the time of human beings in their mid-30s, if they can self-report that they were loved by both of their parents, they're pretty healthy. If they self-report, well, one parent loved me, but the other one didn't, then they're then they're going to be dealing with some health issues by their mid-30s. But when but when they self-report, by their mid thirties that neither parent really loved them, then these people are extremely unhealthy according to scientific research. That is why uh, then they need to come to me. <laughs> yeah, then they need disease, right? Absolutely. Because, uh, you know, it's from unconscious perspective, one of the best thing can happen to you is anxiety. Your body is telling you what you're not doing. Mm -hmm. You know, when I had in my whole life therapy process, in order to get my license um, in this therapeutic process, 
I felt what my father felt when I was in mother's womb, that I was a wanted child. Mm. I felt my mother wanted me, but at the same time, she has some anxiety. So I connected with that anxiety and I carried that anxiety for a long time in my life. And every time I wanted to, unconsciously, I wanted to connect with my mother. I created a situation where I needed to feel the same kind of anxiety because that was my unconscious way of connecting with mother. At the same time, it, 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 it worked as a pseudo security or false security for me. So that's why, you know, we have clients who are borderline personality. Psychiatrists are scared to deal with them because the more chaos they have, more secure they feel because they're, that's why they call them dysfunctional families because they cannot, for them, fighting chaos is the natural form. I have a very interesting case, you know, I have this client who had some hearing problems, right? So he has done all the checkups, everything is all right. So we did some sessions. He goes to mother's womb and he sees that his parents fought a lot with inserts, shouting, and he didn't want to hear this. So he created a temporary deafness in his ears because he didn't want to listen to them, which continued even in adult age. And it was resolved when, you know, he found out and, uh, and went back to his natural hearing. You know what I mean? So, so, you know, these kind of things, because we create, there is a purpose. There is, there is something happening underneath, which we, we don't know because all of our emotions are happening on an unconscious level. All these decisions are being taken on an unconscious level because these parts are, it's like a first language, the language you learn, the language you speak. You know, the first impressions are so important. They did a research. So they picked up a little cat you know, the little, how do you call them? Kitten. Uh, kitten. Kitten. Thank you. I was recently have an interview in Hindi about my first book in <laughs> India. So I was, you know, so <laughs> language sometimes go there. So, so they put that kitten in first 14 days of his birth behind the vertical bars. Mm -hmm. And after 14 days, they put them behind the horizontal bars. He was not able to see horizontal bars. He was hitting to the uh, horizontal bars to come out because his reality was vertical bars. So whatever you learn, you heard, you felt, you, you listen, caught embedded in your subconscious mind and you're in first three or first five years of your age from mother's womb. And all the, all the things you experience based on that, those experiences. Now, Atul Mira, what is transference and what is counter-transference? You know, this is the phenomena which I loved. I call them unconscious hooks. So let us see an example. So here is a mother, here is a son. Son suffers from severe breathing problem. If he doesn't breathe well, he can die. Now, every time he's going through it, mom is five, eight, 10 kilometers away, feels that something is wrong with my son. And she calls the maid and she confirms, yes, your son is going through it. How do you know? And she tells her what precaution he needs, one point of view. Now on the other end, son feels mother has anxiety that he's not breathing well. So he connects with mother beyond time and limit and create those situations where he can die because he knows every time he goes through it, he gets mother's attention. So we don't know who is the initiator, who is the receiver it happens simultaneously beyond time and limit. So this phenomena is known as transfer and counter-transference, and, but I call them unconscious hooks. For example, daughter is scared to go out of the house. Also, the mother doesn't allow her to go out of the house. Nobody is responsible. There is transfer and counter-transference. So, so basically, transfer and counter-transference word is used, the, the relationship between thera thera therapist and the patient but it is not there in the relationship of therapist and patient. It is everywhere in all areas of our life. I would say more than 99% of our relationships are nothing but transfer and counter transference. For example, let us take another example. You know, the uh, one of my favorite movie is Star Wars. So we have Prince Laia, which is uh, Carrie Fisher. She died, right? And her mother 
said, I cannot live without my daughter. Two days later, she had stroke and she died too. A very good example of transfer and counter transference because both are vibrating on the same level and she was in a buried together uh, after a few days. So all these phenomena, so until and unless we, that's why husband and wife, like, you know, they both do arguments. Mm -hmm. So basically they are doing regression to their four years of their age where their parents didn't listen to what they were saying. So they try to yell to just to just to be heard. So that's why it become a heated argument, but no discussion. So, you know, these are the all unconscious responses, unconscious uh, things we have created. What happened? Basically, we grew up biologically, but we got frozen in those parts. And so, what is, Atul Mira, what is unconscious resistance? So unconscious resistance refers to the obstacles presented by the patient to oppose the therapy process. So they are unconscious because they come from very deep psychological layers and unconscious and the conscious mind seeks rational explanations uh, for them. So now, you know, the symptom of a particular disease are anchored in the patient himself. And he's also unconsciously preserving his illness with these parts of his unconscious mind because his disease somehow creates a form to his hidden conflicts at the same time it serves as a protection against discovery and processing of psyche wounds. So it means restrictions, obstacles you create to give up on disease because disease can be a way of calling attention. You know, many of my clients who had a severe disease, they found out that first nobody asked them how they were doing. Mm -hmm. They were all abundant alone, but now they have a disease. Everybody's coming and asking them how they are doing. So see, it's such a simple thing, but pathological way to connect with it. For example, let us say I have a, I have someone who says, I reject my father and my father rejects me. So I tell her, you connect with your father through rejection. Beneath rejection, there is love. So, so even, you know, love is, is either, if it is not expressed healthily, then it ex is, is expressed uh, unhealthily. And, you know, I have remembered this beautiful uh, story about Freud. So Freud was very spiritual, but even he didn't know that he was so spiritual. <laughs> so in the last days of his, uh, in the last days of his, of his life, you know, he writes a beautiful letter to his friend. And he says that we have used all the techniques, all the methods, all psychoanalysis, all, you know, whatever is possible. And we have come to the conclusion that beneath each and everything, what really cures is love. Amen to that. And, you know, when you were talking about unconscious resistance, Atul Mira, in my work as a medical intuitive healer, I talk about the 25 different payoffs mm -hmm. for staying fat, sick, and unwell, right? And they're unconscious, right? Because maybe consciously you're paying professionals to get well, but these payoffs, when I when I see somebody who is addicted to being in pain, I want to do a healing to clear those payoffs mm -hmm. because they will they will um be addicted to their disease. So Atul Mira, the author of The Need for Disease, any final thoughts for our audience? Uh, you know, I would say that it's all right to take medication if it is required, but that is the first step. But now the second step is to need you need to go to the seed of the problem. You need to understand, take awareness what is happening inside around you, because we live our life first to have, then to then to be. If I have a car, if I have this thing, I have this, 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 I exist. If any of that thing is missing, I do not exist. So the life should be first to have. First to be, then to have. If I exist, God exists. If I don't exist, nothing exists. Because without me, this place will be empty and there will be nobody to speak about God. So I am very important. So it's time for you to start taking um, inventory of yourself. Go to your unconscious mind. Look for the situations, techniques, which makes unconscious conscious. And your life is going to be much more balanced and you will get everything in your life. And one of the best things, Start with my first book, The Need for Disease, sorry, or 
the unseen wisdom of the unborn. So I have put, you know, one chapter common there. And then the second, the need for disease. Because if we are going to find answers, there are answers. Because there are stories in the both books where it tells how the thing started from mother's womb and how making unconscious conscious, the person were able to create miracles in your life. So you are the best miracle in your life. Everything is in you. All the questions are inside you. Also all the answers. 90% work is yours. 10% is of any healer. So if you are ready to transform, you can do it because you are the best judge. You've been listening to The Natural Healing Show for UK Health Radio. I'm your host, Catherine Kerrigan, medical intuitive healer, Amazon number one bestselling author. You can find out more about me and my work at katherinekerrigan.com and unlimitedenergynow.com. While you're there, definitely sign up for my newsletter so you can learn even more about how you can heal yourself naturally. Our guest today has been Atul Mira. You can find out more about Atul Mira and his wonderful work at his website, atulmira.com. And remember, part of natural healing is understanding why did I create this disease? And when you get to the root psychological issues about why you created disease, then you can begin to let it go naturally. Thanks so much for listening and you'll let, I look forward to seeing you next time.